Please remain standing for the national anthem sung by Mr. Isaiah Harper and then for the invocation offered by Ms. Brandy Gresham Racine. and let us pray. Our Father, thank you for this day of celebration with family, friends, faculty, and staff. We are grateful to all who have supported us on our educational journey. The journey was a road filled with many twists and turns, but through our perseverance and your guiding hand, we have made it through to a new beginning. Now, as all are gathered here to look on today, it is our time to walk this stage and share our skills, talents, and gifts to bring nothing but great blessings to the world. Help us to look to the future with hope and not to be fearful of changes in life, but to embrace each change as an opportunity to grow. Teach us that even if we cannot do great things, that we can do small things in great ways. Grant us the strength to shine our light on everyone around us and inspire through our actions everyone else to do the same. May we always be sincere in our efforts to help others in need and to be a source of hope. Help us to show gratitude for small blessings and let feelings of love, kindness, and a gentle spirit always be reflected in our actions. Guide us in remembering the past with gratitude and to focusing on the future with hope, high purposes, and grand horizons. May we always put our best foot forward in our walk through life. And in the words of Mark Twain, Work like you do not need the money. Love like you have never been hurt. Sing like no one is listening. Dance like no one is watching. Live like it's heaven on earth. As we begin each new day, we know that you will guide us safely through all things. Bless us in all and lead us through a great life. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Mr. Harper and uh, Ms. Racine. Please take your seats. <clears throat> Welcome all to the fall commencement for Troy University's Phoenix City campus and Fort Benning Columbus site. I'm Dr. David White, the campus vice chancellor, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here this evening. I want to welcome families, friends, and most important, tonight's graduates. I'm glad you joined us on this great day of celebration. These are exciting times in our community. The Chattahoochee River, which for so long provided the power to run our mills and transport our products, has been restored and now provides us with a recreational future as a water park. 
Along the Columbus side of the river, a vibrant downtown has emerged, along with a growing film industry. Along the Phoenix City side, the new Troy Riverfront campus has become a symbol of economic development and revitalization of the Phoenix City Riverfront. The new Troy building, the first of two phases, opened just over four years ago and has allowed us to move our business, nursing, psychology, and social work programs there. In all, we've moved over half of our faculty and staff and students to the new Riverfront campus with plans to relocate the remainder of our campus to the new location in the next three to five years. A beautiful plaza is located on the riverfront side of the new building and includes an area for commemorative bricks. You might consider honoring your graduate this evening with one of these commemorative bricks as a lasting recognition of their accomplishment. Tonight is, in fact, a night for honoring accomplishment. As we begin, I'd like to take a moment to introduce our platform party. I'd ask them to stand as their names are called and remain standing so that we may recognize them. Dr. Vitaly Voloshin, who carried in the mace and led the entrance procession, is the Malone Faculty Member of the Year for the entire university. Dr. Lance Tatum, Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs, who will officiate our ceremony tonight and introduce our commencement speaker. Ms. Susan Wiggins, Vice President, Stakeholder Relations, W.C. Bradley Company, our commencement speaker. Senator Gerald Dye, Dial, Trustee of the University, who will bring greetings from the Board of Trustees and our Chancellor. Ms. Karen Carpenter, Trustee of the University. Mr. Isaiah Harper, Troy University alumnus who led us in the national anthem and will lead us in the alma mater at the end of the program. Dr. Bill Grantham, Associate Dean, College of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Mary Catherine Colley, Associate Professor, Sorrell College of Business. Dr. Trellis Riley, Assistant Dean, College of Education. Dr. Denise Green, Dean, College of Health and Human Services. Dr. Marianne Templeton, Associate Provost and Dean of the Graduate School, who will hood our graduate candidates this evening. And Ms. Jerry Carroll, Campus Registrar, Phoenix City Campus. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for assisting in our ceremony tonight. Please take your seats. I'd also like to recognize our distinguished guests in the audience and ask them to stand. Mr. Eddie Lowe, Mayor of the City of Phoenix City. Ms. Jacqueline Screws, President, Chattahoochee Valley Community College. Ms. Vicki Carter Johnson, City Council Member, District 2. Mr. Arthur Day, City Council Member, District 3. Ms. Caddy Epps, Russell County Commission, District 5. Ms. Ruthie Carpenter, Russell County Board of Education. Mr. Will Lawrence, Phoenix City Board of Education. Ms. Melissa Gant, General Manager, CTV Beam. And Mr. William Hopper, President of the Troy University Alumni Association. Thank you, and thank you for coming and welcome. Additionally, I'd like to recognize our past graduates, our alumni. If you are a graduate of Troy University in our audience tonight, please stand and be recognized. I would like, now like to invite Senator Gerald Dial to the podium to bring greetings from our Board of Trustees and our Chancellor. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. White, and thank you for your great leadership here at Phoenix City, and thank you for your military service. You do a great job for us, and the Board of Trustees is certainly appreciative of that. I bring you greetings tonight from Chancellor Jack Hawkins, who could not be here with you, and from the Board of Trustees, and we have, as you've already heard, introduced Ms. Carter, who is a member of our board. This is a special night. It's a night that I always enjoy attending 
because I get to see the faces of the graduates and you eventually have now come to the point that you realize what you've actually accomplished as you walk across this stage tonight. Nine months ago, I was in Vietnam. I spoke to Troy graduates in Vietnam, a world away from here and quite different from you, but you got one thing in common. After tonight, you will both be joined as Troy alumni. Troy spreads all over the world. Your degree that you receive tonight will be represented in every country on the face of this earth. You've done something special. You've done something special because you set yourself as a goal, you worked for that goal, and you've accomplished it tonight. So on behalf of the Board of Trustees who are excited about this night for you, and we're excited about being here, and we're sure certainly appreciative and you're going to get a special introduction for our speaker but we're so excited to have Ms. Wiggins here tonight and Chancellor Hawkins sends his greetings to you as well. We're excited about tonight. Go Trojans! Thank you Senator Kyle. Today we share in a wonderful celebration a defining moment in the lives of these graduates. We participate in a formal ceremony that has been passed down for hundreds of years and which began as a solemn religious procession, complete with a formal entrance procession as we did today and as has been done for hundreds of years. This commencement ceremony connects all of these graduates to the larger community of learning, complete with its traditions and history. The garments that we wear are called regalia and represent the distinguishing symbols of office or rank. They look much like they did in the Middle Ages when the great universities of the Western world were emerging. Another important part of the commencement tradition is that of the commencement address. The speaker is selected to both honor our graduates and encourage them to use their new status wisely. Introducing our speaker for tonight is Dr. Lance Tatum. Dr. Tatum has over 25 years of experience working in, the, in a variety of areas within higher education. During his career, he served as a tenured faculty member, holding the rank of professor, a department chair, an academic college dean, and vice chancellor. His professional experiences over the past 20 years at Troy University have enabled him to work within one of the nation's most dynamic and entrepreneurial higher education se settings. In January of this year, Dr. Tatum was appointed as the Senior Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs for Troy University. Prior to this appointment, Dr. Tatum served in a variety of administrative roles for the university, including Vice Chancellor of the Montgomery Campus, Vice Chancellor of Global Campus, Dean of the College of Education, and Department Chair for the P Department of Kinesiology and Health Promotion. Dr. Tatum earned his bachelor's and master's degree in education from Troy State University and a PhD from Florida State University. Dr. Tatum has served on a variety of statewide boards and commissions related to education, as well as serving as uh, the university's faculty athletics representative to the NCAA from 2000 to 2008. He currently serves on the Air University Foundation Board of Trustees the Greater Montgomery YMCA Board of Directors, and the Alabama Korean Educational and Economic Partnership Board of Directors. Please join me in welcoming to our commencement, Dr. Lance Tatum. Good evening and thank you, David, for that uh, introduction. Ms. Susan Wiggins has served since 1980 with the W.C. Bradley Company and in 1992 became the first woman officer in the company's 134-year history to be appointed as Vice President for Stakeholder Relations. For the past 39 years, Susan has had the unique opportunity of working for three generations of company founder W.C. Bradley. Since its inception, the name W.C. Bradley has stood for integrity, stewardship, and Susan is passionate about commitment to the concept that it is up to each of the company's employees to keep it so. Prior to joining the W.C. Bradley Company, Susan held the position of Marketing Officer for Trust Company of Columbus, 
where she was the first woman hired to be an officer of that bank. She has served on numerous civic and professional boards in the community, including past chair of the Better Business Bureau and president of the Columbus Advertising Federation. Currently, she serves as chairperson of the Chattahoochee Valley Community College Foundation, is a member of the Downtown Phoenix City Redevelopment Authority Board, and serves as the lay leader and pastor parish relations committee chair of Epworth United Methodist Church in Phoenix City. She has also been instrumental in the foundation and formation of the East Alabama Riverfront Development Organization, whose mission is to revitalize the Phoenix City Riverfront and create economic stimulus for the downtown area. Susan is the recipient of the W.C. Bradley Company Spirit Award and has been recognized as a Girl Scout Woman of Achievement, as well as receiving the United Way's Dedicated Service Award and the D. Abbott Turner Volunteer of the Year Award. Susan is also an inductee in the Chattahoochee Valley Community College Hall of Fame for Distinguished Service. Susan holds a Bachelor of Arts degree in Psychology from the University of Alabama and is a native of Hatchaby, Alabama and also Torquay, Saskatchewan, Canada. Susan has a son, Frank, who is 39. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming tonight's commencement speaker, Mrs. Susan Wiggins. Thank you so much. Pull that down. Dr. White and Senator Dow, distinguished faculty and guests, parents, grandparents, and all the other wonderful family members that are out there, and most especially you honored graduates this evening. I salute you and applaud you and just am so honored to be part of this celebration with you. This is a really momentous moment in your life and I want you to take it in and enjoy every minute of it. It's really my honor to be here with you this evening. We, when I speak, I like to kind of open and close with a quote from a famous person, so I'm going to do that tonight. And I begin with, to those of you who received honors and awards and distinctions, I say well done. And to the C students, I say you too can be President of the United States. George W. Bush. <laughs> you guys remember that. When I woke up this morning with the, turned the TV on, Good Morning America said that today was National Donut Day, which I didn't know that, but I thought, boy, that's a good omen for you guys. What a great thing to graduate on National Donut Day. So if you haven't eaten one, please eat one tonight. You've earned it. You deserve it. You can afford it. Got to work today. There were donuts all over the office. Everybody was in a great mood. Nothing to be happy, not to be happy about on National Donut Day. On a little more serious note, I was thinking about you all last evening as I was thinking about being here with you this evening. And what could I share that you might could take with you and, and uh, do something with? And I was watching the ABC News with David Muir. And the, if you saw it, it was a very uh, moving uh, ceremony uh, commemorating the 75th anniversary of D-Day uh, in Normandy. And there were veterans there who actually landed on the beach that day who are now in their 90s, U.S. veterans. And it was so stirring to see the President of the United States and the President of France uh, saluting them and greeting them. And then I was certainly, I was moved to tears when the President of France stepped to the microphone, Emmanuel Macron, and he fought. He's, he looked at those veterans and he said, on behalf of the people of France, I want to thank you for the freedom that we enjoy today and we know who is responsible for it. And gosh, I thought, yes, we must all remember that and how fortunate we are to live in this country and enjoy the freedom of speech and assembly and religion that we have here and the opportunities afforded to all of our citizens through education. So I would like to, and I hope that we never, that I never take this freedom for granted and the price that it costs, not only in the past, but today still. And I would like to ask you to join me. Let's recognize the veterans in this room tonight who are currently serving or are retired 
for their service to our country and the freedom and quality of life that we enjoy. One thing I know, without having met any of you, now I'm going to hone in on the graduates here. One thing I know, I don't know your name and I haven't had the chance to meet you and hope I will get that opportunity. But as your potential prospective employer, I've got some things I want to share with you. Whether you realize it or not, you are now among this country's most educated segment of the population. The U.S. Census Bureau notes only about a third of the adult population in the United States has a bachelor's degree or higher. In this area, that figure drops to 25%. So you're in the top 25% of this region. You are now among an elite group and you have something no one can ever take away from you in education. The ability to think deeply, the creativity to solve society's most complex problems, and the resources to help others. And that leads me to, I called Matt Barkley and told him I was coming to talk to you all. He's the Vice President of Human Resources at the Bradley Company. And I said, Matt, tell me, when you're talking to somebody who's just graduated from college, especially somebody that hasn't had the chance to have a lot of experience yet, work experience, what do you look for? What sets them apart from the others? What makes you take a chance on them and hire them? And he quickly said three things. The first thing was he looks for servant leaders. And he's specific about that. He doesn't talk in generality. He wants to know what you have done in your lifetime to build a better world. What have you done to give back to society? Secondly, he's looking for people who are, have been successful working with teams or leading teams because nobody gets anything done by themselves. And lastly, and maybe even, well, it's not much, they're all important. He's looking for lifelong learners because you've got to have that mindset. You have just done the most wonderful thing for yourself, earning this degree. But keep that mindset because the world is changing at such a rapid pace with technology and communication that you have got to keep up. So you've got to continue learning as you go forward from here and just have that as your mindset. I want to personally encourage each of you as you leave here tonight, if you haven't already done this, some of you will have done this, think about what your personal definition for success is. You sort of need that so you know where you're trying to get to and you'll know where you're going and you'll know when you get there. So give that some thought. You might, everybody here, if we had time to ask you all what that was and you thought about it for just a minute, that I'll be different. Uh, it'd be fun to go around the table in your home and ask your family that question. Mine is really simple. For me, I define success as going to bed feeling safe and waking up feeling excited. And boy, have I been blessed to have a career for 40 years at the W.C. Bradley Company. I say I've had the best job in America, which if you find that, you'll realize that you never work another day in your life. It's a privately held company, still owned by the founder's family, Mr. W.C. Bradley, and it's had five chairmen of the board since 1985. I have had the opportunity to work for four of them. One of the primary things about my job, so what is it, is stakeholder relations. It's to preserve and promote the culture of servant leadership in our company. And, no, and now we're globally, a global business. We have companies around the world and in Europe and China and all over the United States. So how do we pull them together under this concept of the Bradley Company and servant leadership? So what is that? You hear a lot about that. What, what the heck is that? Well, integrity and stewardship are the underpinnings of servant leadership. And when uh, one of the things I said about Mr. Bradley was his word was his bond. In his day, he could literally do a big business deal with a handshake. Well, in today's litigious society, we can no longer do that, of course. Uh, the world has changed. But we, our word and our name still means uh, a lot to us. And we have to, when we go out in the world representing the Bradley Company, we have to realize we are representing this family and their name. And so we must, we take that seriously and we stand behind what we say or 
to the absolute best of our ability, and that's the kind of people that we're looking for. We have a story that I share, a true story, with new employees when W.C. Bradley's great-grandson, Steve Butler, became chairman of the Bradley Company, and he was my boss for most of my time. Um, Steve sent a Christmas gift that year, a box of fruit, to a list of re re Bradley retirees. And he wrote him a letter and he thanked them for the foundation that they had laid before he came and how important it was and how much he appreciated them. And a man named Mr. Lawrence Blau wrote Steve the most beautiful letter back. And he said, Steve, let me tell you a story. He said, I came to work, he said, I worked at the Bradley Company 45 years. I was an outside salesman. An outside salesman sold products in a hundred mile circumference around Columbus. And he sold fertilizer from Bradley Fertilizer and seed and agricultural products. He said, the first week at work in that 45 years, I went down to call on the feed and seed store in Richland, Georgia. Richland's about um, 50, 60 miles south of here. And so he called on the man, he got ready to leave. And he said, the owner of the business said, son, are you heading back to Columbus right now? And he said, yes, sir. And he said, well, you've got to go through Lumpkin, that's the county seat. And he said, would you mind making a bank deposit for me? And he said, the whole time he was talking, he started taking money out of the cash register and putting it in a brown paper bag. And he did it up like this and he handed it to him. Here, just drop it at the bank. They'll know what to do. They'll send me a receipt. And he, Mr. Blah said, I said, well, you know, you just met me today. You don't know me. Are you sure? Don't you want to count it so you know how much you put in that sack? And the man looked at him and he said, he said, son, you work for W.C. Bradley. That's all I need to know. So he told Steve, so he said, I'll tell you, I spent the next 45 years of my life trying to live up to that reputation for integrity, both in my personal life as well as in my work life. That's how seriously we take representing our name and, and, and uh, only upholding the high standards of integrity. Another tenet of servant leadership is simply caring about each other. This is kind of Sunday school stuff here. Caring about each other and loving each other. Mr. Bradley's grandson, William B. Turner, uh, affectionately known as Mr. Bill by many people in the community, has really become known as the father of servant leadership in this region. And he was um, interviewed. He, he took over the company when it was his time and, uh, to run the company. And during that reign, Synovus got um, voted by Fortune Magazine, selected in Fortune Magazine as the best company in America to work for. So Fortune Magazine sent a reporter to town to interview Bill and, and uh, to do a story on this best company in America to work for. And so Mr. Turner was chairman of Synovus, he was chairman of the Bradley Company, he was on the board of Coca-Cola, he was on Georgia Power, all those things, and the guy said, Mr. Turner, all the companies you run are so successful. I'd like to share with our readers, what is your business, what's your secret, what's your business strategy that does that? And Bill looked at him and he said, well, um, you know, we love each other. And the guy said, well, I mean, you know, a business term that I can use. And Mr. Turner said, well, we care about each other. We care about each other, you know, we love each other. A third time, the guy said, you know, I'm looking for a business model, a term, terminology that I can, people can understand. At that point, Mr. Turner was beginning to get a little frustrated with this interview, and he said, uh, look, when in our company, when someone shares, share, sheds tears, we all shed tears. He said, we care about each other. That simple. So that was, Aunt, that was his secret to success. He told me a million times, Susan, if you take care of the people, the people will take care of the company. It was interesting when that article came out in Fortune magazine that he did not quote Bill Turner, one of the greatest corporate leaders of all time. Another underlying tenet in our company and its servant and servant leadership is respect for the individual. No matter who that individual is, no matter what their job is. In our company, um, the you know, belief is all people are created equal in God's eyes. We simply have different roles to play in the company and in life, and that's because we have different talents and different gifts. When I, my first day of work in 1980, and some of these things talk about sticking with you and influencing your life forever. 
my first day of work, May 1st, 1980. I went down my offices. I worked two blocks up the street here on Front Avenue. Been downtown my whole career, or now uptown. Uh, and I went in to speak to Mr. D.A. Turner, who was chairman of the company. Mr. D.A. Turner was W.C. Bradley's son-in-law. He married his only daughter. So there are no Bradleys in the family. The name, family name changed to Turner. He was 88 years old. He came to the office every day, but he was getting physically uh, fragile. And I went in to let him know I had come to work, how excited I was to be there, and that I would be spending time with him, interviewing him about the history of the company, because that was one of my first missions from his son, from Bill Turner. Let's, let's document this rich and wonderful history. When I entered his office and walked through the door, Mr. D.A. immediately began to get up from his desk, and he had to push up because it was hard for him to stand up. And I'm going, no, please be, don't stand up. I'm nobody. I've been here five minutes. Don't stand up. I had the great privilege to work with him for two years, and he, I never entered his office in two years that he did not stand up, ever. Very humble, completely respectful of every individual in the company and, and, and the world and what they bring to the table. And then just a searing story that happened uh, that it just made a tremendous impact on my view of um, really life and work and servant leadership in such a valuable and wonderful lesson to learn early in my career. It happened in, um, it happened 38 years ago. And I can see it like it was yesterday. In my mind's eye, I could describe this person to you. Again, I'm two blocks up the street in my office, working late. Everybody had gone for the day. And the building that I was in had windows that you could see outside. And it was a very cold winter's day, bitter cold, rain and horrible storms. It had been bad for days. And I walked out and I looked up and I could see this homeless guy approaching the building through the windows. And I thought, okay, well, the door's unlocked and I'm here by myself, uh, but I've got, I've got some hot coffee. I didn't have anything else, but I thought I can offer him a cup of hot coffee. Well, that was before the river walk. So there were a lot of people down uh, under the Dillingham Street Bridge, unfortunately. So I waited there, rather than going back into my office, for him to come in. And um, I noticed his clothes were dirty. He was disheveled looking. And this was also um, prior to, believe it or not, you young people won't even believe I'm this old, before computers and emails. So that did not exist then uh, at, this, at this day uh, 38 years ago. The night before, we had a gentleman that worked in our cotton warehouse, whose job was here on Front Avenue, who was from my hometown, by the way, Hatchachubby. <laughs> can't believe he couldn't pronounce Hatchachubby. Hatchachubby. His house burned to the ground. He had eight children. Th these are completely true stories. And he, not, nobody was injured, thank goodness. But they lost everything, everything. And they had no insurance. Remember, no email. So the old fashioned way, and at that time, the Bradley Company had a number of businesses around Columbus and Phoenix City. And I did an email on old fashioned paper that we sent out to post on bulletin boards asking our employees to reach out and care about this fellow employee and to help them with donations of money or clothes or towels or dishes or whatever. So through the day, people poured into our office and brought things. So this guy comes inside the building, and again, I'm standing there waiting on him, and when he gets to the inside door where he can actually see me through the window then, he opened the door, and the very first thing he did instantly was remove his hat as a gesture of respect to me. And he removed that hat and nodded to me, and he approached me with his hand extended like this with something in it. And he gave this to me, and he said, this is for the gentleman whose house burned down. And then he turned around and said, good evening, you have a good evening, and put his hat on and left. So I opened up that piece of paper 
and it was a check on CB&T Bank, just like my CB&T checks, and it was $400. And it said on the subject line, it had on the memo line, it said Acts 2035. Well, I didn't know my Bible good enough to know what that said, so I went to my office and got my Bible and looked it up and it said, in everything I did, I sh showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Now I had written a check that day, it was not for $100, and I looked up that, that guy's name to see who that was. Obviously he was a fellow employee because he knew about this. Sure enough, he worked, he was one of my fellow team members and worked at charcoal plant across town in our foundry, where at that time we melted aluminum ingots to um, make molten aluminum that we poured into molds to make the grill castings. So you get dirty working in there because there's some soot involved with that job. A very hard job. He had worked much harder than I had all day, and then he had driven across town to make sure that we got that money. Later, I asked the guy that worked in the warehouse if they knew each other, and he said no. No, they didn't know each other personally. So Mr. Turner nailed it. When we, when we shed tears in our company, we all shed tears, and we care about each other. And you know what? The Bradley Company is going into its sixth generation of family ownership and involvement and direction, which is almost unheard of for a family-owned company. So that underpinning, that servant leadership philosophy and mentality will take you far in life. It will take, it's the reason the company is doing, is stronger today financially than it's ever been in its history, and it will take you far in life. So closing, my mentor and great friend, Mr. Bill Turner, wrote a book about servant leadership called His Journey, The Journey Toward Servant, The Learning of Love, A Journey Toward Servant Leadership. And he closed the book with, even though I'm in the autumn of my years, I remain focused on the future. It is my hope that my family, both personal and corporate, will build on the foundation that is here and continue to dream great dreams because no one ever got excited about small ones. Mr. Turner truly, truly believed you cannot love too much or dream too big. And I leave that challenge from him with each of you. And I just wish you all the best in the future. Godspeed and God bless. Conferring degrees tonight on behalf of the Chancellor is Dr. Lance Taylor. Will the candidates for the associate degree please stand? Dr. Tatum, these candidates have completed all requirements for the associate degree. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred upon them at this time. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the laws of the state of Alabama, it is my pleasure to confer upon each of you the associate's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. In keeping with the tradition, please move your tassels from the right to the left side of your caps and be seated. Will the candidates for the bachelor's degree please rise? <laughs> Dr. Tatum, these candidates have completed all requirements for the bachelor's degree. And on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred upon them at this time. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the laws of the state of Alabama, it is my pleasure to confer upon each of you the bachelor's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please 
please move your tassels from the right to the left side of your caps and be seated. Will the candidates for the master's degree please stand? Dr. Tatum, these candidates have completed all requirements for the master's degree. And on behalf of the faculty, I recommend that the degree be conferred upon them at this time. Upon the recommendation of the graduate faculty and by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and the laws of the state of Alabama, it is my pleasure to confer upon each of you the master's degree which you have earned. Congratulations. Please be seated. The graduates will now be called forward by the dean of the college of each college and receive their degrees. With the graduates receiving the associate's degree in the College of Arts and Sciences. Please come forward to receive your diplomas. Jakara L. Hall. Congratulations, well done. Mandy Gina Hussey. Well Sonia Cherise Don Robinson. Please come forward and receive your diplomas. <laughs> James Marshall Cox, cum laude. Jonathan Michael Collins, summa cum laude. Well Colette Nicole Howard. Well Tony A. Emerson. Well done, Mr. Emerson. Anthony K. Bitterman. Receiving the bachelor's degree in the Sorrell College of Business, 
Please come forward to receive your diplomas. the bachelor's degree in the College of Education, please come forward to receive your diplomas. Christy Lee Burns Smith.
Will the graduates who have earned the bachelor's degree from the College of Health and Human Services please come forward to receive your diplomas? Delinia M. Hatchett. Jerry Jerome Jesse. <laughs> Claudia Dorella Martin, Magna Cum Laude. <laughs> Cheryl Marie Perry, Cum Laude. Inga Yvette Choi. Deborah Denise Davis, Mountain Water. Andrea Heath. Lanier Payne the second. Brianna Elijah Jenkins. Janita Williams. Travisia F. Jelks. Our 
Shaniqua Shane Jennings. Will the graduates receiving the master's degree in the College of Education please come forward to receive your diplomas?
for the graduates who have earned a master's degree from the College of Health and Human Services, please come forward to receive your diplomas. Jaquita Nicole Baldwin. <laughs> Sally Ann Pyle. Angelita. Reyes Kiros. <laughs> Teresa R. Rosser. <laughs> Callie Way Smith. Brandy Lee Washburn. Please join these graduates. Well, uh, uh, first of all, one final round of applause for all of our graduates tonight. Now, if you will please join these graduates by, by standing for the alma mater, led by Mr. Isaiah Harper. standing and we'll ask Miss Bridget D. Wilkes to come forward to give the benediction. After the benediction, the platform party will process out, followed by the graduates. We ask you to honor your graduates by allowing them to exit the auditorium first. Now, Ms. Wilkes. Let us pray. Thank you for allowing us to come together and celebrate the hard work of the 2019 Troy University graduates. This graduation ceremony symbolizes the end of one chapter, but also the beginning of another. You have blessed us with supportive families, advisors, professors, classmates, and community leaders to help guide and shape us to get to this very moment. You have encouraged us, challenged us, and helped us to engage in career opportunities that we have never anticipated. Now as new goals are planned, I pray for guidance and support for each of us as we engage in new experiences. I pray that 
we will use the knowledge, skills, and techniques we learned at Troy University to do your will. I pray that when faced with obstacles and victories, we will continue to give you thanks and seek your guidance as decisions are made. Help us to be bold, courageous, compassionate, and thoughtful. Continue to watch over us, our families, our community, our nation, and Troy University. Thank you for your blessings that you have provided for us. Thank you for helping us to have open minds and hearts as you have placed new plans in our paths. And now to the graduates. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face, the rains fall soft upon your fields, and until we meet again, I pray that God may hold you in the palm of his hand. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.